The following program is a production of Truth For The World. Thank you for joining us again on Ask the Expert. Again, we have Dan Cates with us today. Dan is an instructor at the Memphis School of Preaching. He has a, a master's degree in biblical studies from Ambridge University. And uh, as he teaches at the Memphis School of Preaching, he teaches both English and Greek. And so he's qualified to teach us uh, what we're going to learn here today. We've been in a study of lessons on something called Bible gramming. And that is basically, as we've learned in the last couple shows, uh, using the, the English language to diagram certain Bible sentences and uh, verses. And we've learned quite a lot. And at the end of our last show, we needed to wrap up on Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. And so uh, I'll just turn it over to you, Dan, and you can just wrap up Acts 2.38 and then tell us where to go from there. Okay. As we were looking at Acts 2.38, we, we were seeing that we have a coordinating conjunction. Peter said, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. And he said that showing that repentance and baptism were equally important. Now, the, uh, there in Acts 2.38, we brought that up because of Acts 22.16, where we see, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be condemned or shall be damned. We noticed in that passage, Peter said, uh, Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized. Now, these were necessary for them to, as we had diagrammed earlier, receive the blessing. What was the blessing? For the remission of sins and so that they could receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay. So that's what's being spoken of in Acts 2.38. Right. We tied that into Acts 22.16. Now, you asked where we wanted to go for, from here. Right. In Acts 22.16, we were introduced to what was called a verbal... You may remember that calling on the name of the Lord, calling was a verbal, a participle. Right. And that was a participial phrase showing the, the, the uh, person who was doing these things, the person who was uh, arising, being baptized, and having his sins washed away was the one calling on the name of the Lord. Right. That, was, that was what made him one with that characteristic. We want to build upon this idea of verbals. We introduced them last time. We mentioned that verbals are divided into three groups. You have gerunds, which are verb forms, plus ing, which are used as nouns. And then we had participles. A participle is like calling in Acts 22:16. A participle is a verb ending in, in that case, ing, or they can end in ed, d, en, n, or t, which are used as adjectives. Okay. And then we mentioned that third were infinitives. Infinitives were those which had the word to, which had the word to, plus the verb used as nouns, adjectives, or adverbs. What we want to do is to look at another passage that goes into, uh, into all three of these okay. so that we can see how they sort of relate to each other and we can have several examples of each. So we're going to go to Hebrews 10, verses 23 through 25. Okay. Hebrews 10, 23 through 25. There we read, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, 
but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching. There's a lot involved in these three verses, right. and there are quite a number of words there, but that's just one sentence. Okay. And so if we can understand how all of the words fit together, and certainly we can get a great appreciation of what Paul is saying, but especially that will help us to appreciate what gerunds, participles, and infinitives are. Just in a cursory glance, we see in verse 23 a gerund in the word wavering. Wavering is a gerund being used as the object of the preposition without. So are, you, are we going to we gonna? We'll, we'll be diagramming these, okay. these in just right. a moment. But just a cursory reading of this sentence. We see a gerund in verse 23. We get into verse 24. And we say, let us consider one another to provoke. Okay, there we have to and a verb. So to provoke is an infinitive. To provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking. Okay, forsaking is another gerund. Uh, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of... Sorry, that's, that's actually a verb there. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching. Approaching there would be an inf a participle. Okay. And actually, the uh, two that we mentioned, uh, forsaking and exhorting, we'll, we'll identify those right. in just a moment as we get to them in the diagram. And as you, as you do this, the, the context is that some of these, some of these uh, Christians were considering leaving, right? Going back to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, if I have this historically correct, going back into Judaism, uh, leaving Christ, right? That's right. What Paul was doing in the letter to the Hebrews was he was emphasizing how much greater Christ was than those blessings which even the, Gentile, uh, even the Jews had had right. during the Old Testament. And it sort of harkens back to the book of Romans, where in Romans, I believe it's chapter 3, Paul asks at the beginning of that chapter, uh, what advantage is there then in being a Jew? You see, in, in Romans chapter 1, Paul had uh, basically spoken concerning the errors of the Gentiles. Right. We can remember especially Romans 1, uh, the last 10 or 11 verses of that chapter. He's talking about those who, even though they had the witness of God through His creation and so forth, had left God. In chapter 2 of Romans, Paul said, but the Gentiles aren't the only ones at fault. You, you too are right. to blame for having left Christ and having been in sin or having never accepted Christ. And he began to list the ways in which the Jews uh, had stumbled. And so in chapter 3, he asks, was there no advantage? Right. And of course, he goes on to say, yes, there was a great advantage. And that's what we see basically in the book of Hebrews. So now he's writing to a people, and he's trying to, to spur them. And he's writing to a people who have been converted. In fact, he says, having been washed. Right. So these are ones who are Christians. Okay. And that's, that's the context of what we're dealing with. Okay. When we look at verse 23, we see the first of our clauses in this verse. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. We see let us. There we have a, another understood subject, you. He's talking to the, to the Hebrews okay. audience. You let. Let what? Well, in this verse, our, our direct object is going to be hold fast. Let us hold fast. Now, this is going to be an interesting uh, aspect. Us hold. Us hold is the actual direct object. Here we have a clause being used as the direct object okay. of the action verb there. Let us hold how Fast, okay, or, or securely, if you will. Let us hold fast what? The profession. Which profession of faith? Which faith? Our faith. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Hold it fast how? Well, hold wavering. Well, wavering is a participle. Okay. As we noticed earlier, participle is a verb form. 
ending in ing or edd, en, n, or t, uses an adjective. Now, there's a modifier to wavering, and that modifier is the adverb without. Without wavering, let us hold fast profession. Now, um, this, uh, this without wavering, this is describing the person who is holding fast to profession. Okay. All right, so that's the point of verse 23. We have a parenthetical expression, for he is faithful that promised. Uh, that's a reference to God, what he's promised. If we will do our part, he's faithful, he'll do his part. Okay. But let's move to verse 24, since the end of verse 23 was just a parenthetical expression. And let us consider, okay, same type of construction here. Let us consider, and we're going to have an and. The and is a coordinating conjunction. Okay. It's joining things of equal rank. Let us consider. Again, we have the understood you. Let us consider. Let what? Well, here we have another clause serving as the direct object. And this is obviously a little bit more advanced right. than what we've had, but we'll point out what each of these words is okay. doing right. in just a moment. Let us consider. Now, we might ask this. Let us consider whom? And the answer to that question is one another. So let us consider another. Which another? One another. Now we see why. To provoke unto love and good works. To provoke is an infinitive being used as an adjective. Okay. Or adverb, rather. To provoke. Now why would this not be a preposition? Just... Okay, that's a great question. Often we will have to serving as a preposition. Uh, the mouse went to the box, right. as we mentioned right. earlier with that illustration. For a word to be a preposition, it has to be followed by a noun. Okay. So, to the box, box is the noun, it's the object of the preposition. If a to does not have an object, it cannot be a preposition. Oh, okay. And here it is followed by a verb okay. to provoke. So this automatically tells us we're dealing with an infinitive. Okay, all right. And so we might ask, ask the question regarding this provoking, to provoke how or to provoke where? And the answer to that question is likewise seen in here in verse 24. Provoke unto love. So where or how? Provoke unto love. We also see and to good works. We have another okay. uh, coordinating conjunction. Here the coordinating conjunction is joining prepositional phrases. Right. And to good works. To works, which kind of works? Good works. Now, if this is too small for the camera to pick up, we just want to say that uh, they can also go and view this on the internet, right? Uh, on your uh, on your uh, website. Is it... I don't know that we have this one diagrammed oh, okay. on this the chart. This may not be diagrammed. Well, if not, maybe we'll try to put a, a thing up there where the, where we can see this. If it's too small. Okay. So. All right. Uh, hopefully, when we start identifying things, even if somebody can't read the actual words, okay. uh, they'll be able to see based on how we label each one, okay. what is in each position. But here we see Hebrews 10.23, Hebrews 10.24. We mentioned that verse 25 is another uh, part of this sentence. Right. We see, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching. Right. Now, forsaking is one of those words that could be a verb. You can forsake this or that. Uh, it's a word which could be a participle. Now, if it's going to be a verb, it has to have a subject. Okay. And there's not a, a subject for forsaking. So it must be being used as another part of speech. I, I would contend, and I believe that the, the English grammar supports it, 
that not forsaking the assembling, and the same is true of exhorting, because it's combined with the, uh, with the coordinating conjunction, but forsaking and exhorting has to do with the you. The you, let us hold fast profession. You, let us consider one another. Okay. Okay. So, let's describe this you. Who is it that Paul's writing to? Uh, he's writing to those who need to hold their profession, need to consider one another. Now, we don't have one expressed you at, at all, uh, one expressed subject okay. for let and let. So what we'll do is we will look at this. It's the same person. We'll look at this as a compound subject. And we haven't lost anything. It means exactly the same that it did. You let. Okay. You let. You just combine. This will make two. it easier okay. to diagram and to see what forsaking and exhorting means or where forsaking and exhorting fit. Let's see if forsaking fits as a participle. A verb form ending in ing used as an adjective. Okay? Forsaking is modified by not. Forsaking how? Not. One who is not forsaking is one who is holding his profession, considering one another to love and to good works. Not forsaking what? Hmm. In verse 25, the assembling of ourselves together. So assembling, what is assembling? Assembling, again, there's a verb, assemble. It ends in ing. It could be a verb, but there's no subject. Okay. It could be a gerund or a participle, one of these verbals. It's not describing something. So can it be a gerund? And the answer to that question is yes. And this is how we diagram a gerund. But if we ask, what is he talking about forsaking? He's talking about forsaking the assembling. We know that because it answers the question what, but we also know it because it is being modified by the. The assembling. Not forsaking the assembling. And the, as a definite article, Specific. can only modify nouns or pronouns. Oh, okay. So assembling is a noun. Now, which assembling? The assembling, right. which assembling of ourselves and which assembling together. The assembling together. And one hint as far as knowing exactly what is modifying what. If you can pull one part out and grammatically the sentence still makes sense, you've probably diagrammed it correctly. Oh, okay. So this would be not forsaking the assembling together. Right. That indicates that together is modifying assembling, assembling, not ourselves. Okay. For instance, if we had the word, and we don't, but if we had the word only. Okay. Uh, if we took of ourselves assembling the only together or the assembling only together, okay. that doesn't okay. make right. sense. Right. So that would have to be with ourselves together fits with assembling. Now, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, of some is, forsaking, how were some forsaking? Or, or how were some living, if you will? What was their manner? Their manner was forsaking. So as manner, here we have a preposition and the object of the preposition. Which manner? Of some. Okay. Let me do like this, manner of some, we have a verb connected with manner, which is why I'm having to do this, manner is. Manner is, is a clause being used as the object of the preposition as. Okay. Now, we see a contrast, but exhorting one another. We won't go ahead and diagram okay. that, but imagine exhorting being just like forsaking. Okay exhorting one another. What this shows us is the importance of meeting with the saints. We think about the, the opportunities that, that we have to get together with those who are of a like precious faith. 
we have opportunities, uh, maybe on or certainly on Sundays, maybe we have opportunities midweek. And sometimes we take those opportunities for granted. Some will come just for a Sunday morning service, right. and, and they think that they have uh, perhaps punched the ticket, so to speak, and they don't have to come back until the next Sunday. Right. To do that is really to cheat oneself, but it's also to cheat the brethren. Right. Because this assembling is not just done for my benefit, it's done for the benefit of those who are of like precious faith. And those who are forsaking the assembling are those who are not holding the profession and considering one another love and good works. The one not forsaking the assembling, the one exhorting one another, is the one who is holding his profession and is considering another to provoke unto love, unto love and good works. So what we see when somebody isn't faithful in attendance is that there's really a deeper lying problem. Right. It's not just that somebody doesn't want to come on a Sunday night. His holding that profession isn't, isn't as strong as it should be. Right. His considering his brethren isn't as strong as it should be. Right. So what we have in this verse, if we have time to go through and identify sure. these particular elements now, we had... A participle with forsaking. This participle identifies you. Okay. Here we had a subject, an action verb, and a direct object. Us hold profession. Now the, the us is a little bit different because usually we have what's called a nominative case pronoun in the subject spot. That is I, uh, you, he, she, okay. or it. Uh, we, you, or they. This is actually an objective case. Every so often you see that this is serving as the object of the action verb let. Okay. So that's, that's why we see that in this, particular, okay. in this particular example. Wavering, we notice that that was a participle describing us. We're holding without wavering the profession. Hold how? Fast. Now, when you say fast, let's just clarify what securely. you Securely. Okay. Hold securely our profession. Fast was an adverb. Without was an adverb because it's modifying a verbal, which is like okay. a verb. Of faith, here we have a prepositional phrase. This is an adjective phrase with the preposition, the object of the preposition, and the uh, pronoun being used as an adjective which faith or whose faith, okay. our faith. Here we see a coordinating conjunction indicating that these two things are of equal, equal weight. We have again our action verb. And just like above, we have subject, action verb, direct object. Who's performing the action? Us. Uh, what are we doing? Considering uh, whom? Another. Which another? One is an adjective. Here we see to provoke. This is an infinitive, which is being used as an adverb. Okay. To provoke where or how? Unto love. This is an adverb phrase and coordinating conjunction. To good works. This is another adverb phrase. Okay. So our... Uh... What we're saying then is, if I'm understanding correctly, in using this, uh, by my attending, by my showing myself present uh, for the, the services uh, of the saints when they meet together, uh, what I'm actually doing is showing that uh, I'm holding my, prof my profession without wavering. So I'm showing myself to be at least... Uh, a faithful Christian. Right. Remember that Paul spoke in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 through 3, about our vocation. Mm -hmm. uh, Christianity is not a hobby. and A hobby would be an avocation. Right. Paul spoke about this being a vocation, a job. And here we see the word profession. Right. Same type of idea. I, I am faithful to my job. Right. And so uh, not, only am I, not only am I faithful, but I'm also considering you. Uh, That's right. If you're there in the assembly as well. And so uh, by this... I'm by my, simply by my being there. Well, I think that's interesting because a lot of times some people say, well, I can be faithful too. I don't have to go every, 
every time the doors are open and I can still be faithful. But that's kind of not what we're, what we're getting the picture of here, right? That's right. That, that's, it's not the case that the Bible says, I, I can just go when it's convenient for me. Right. What, what this indicates, and, and what's really important here is to provoke. Mm. Uh, we, we consider one another when we worship. Now, there are a number of ways we could consider one another. We, we could be singing, and the person beside us uh, could be singing, and we could be thinking, uh, that person's out of tune. Right. Well, that would be considering another. Right. But that's not what this is talking right. about. We could be there, and we could be thinking, well, uh, Brother So-and-so, I bet he doesn't put much in the collection plate. Well, right. that, that would be considering right. one another, right. but that's not what this is talking about. This considering is a considering which is aimed at provoking, right. not provoking a fight, provoking love and provoking works. Good works. When I am faithful in attendance, when I am a not forsaking the assembly one, right. when I am an exhorting one another one, when that describes me, then it shows that I, I'm holding my profession and it also shows that I'm concerned that I'm building up mm -hmm. My brethren. I think maybe that's one reason, uh, and you can maybe correct me if my thinking if it's wrong. Uh, maybe one reason that when we uh, find out that you know a, a brother has stopped attending for a, an amount of time, we can start to go to him and say, "Hey, you know what's what else is going on in life?" Because it's the first it's the first step of perhaps this wavering uh, of the profession that we can actually uh, we can actually physically see it, though he may mentally be struggling before that. That's right. That's right. Certainly, what this indicates is forsaking is, a, is an, il in, an illustration that something is wrong somewhere else. Right. Okay. At the same time, uh, you, you will see that when somebody is not concerned about his brethren's welfare, this is going to start happening. Wow. Okay. So they're well, tied that's together. Great. That's great. And I tell you, we've learned... We've learned quite a lot. Uh, there were times when I may have been a little bit confused in this, I'll be honest, but uh, I, th I think uh, through a little more study, I will be fine. Um, if you've struggled with this at all, then please go to Dan's uh, web website, uh, katespublications.com, and uh, he has some things on there that you can download. And we certainly have enjoyed our time together, and thank you very much. If you would like to learn more about God's Word with a free Bible correspondence course, then write us at Truth For The World, P.O. Box 5048, Duluth, Georgia, 30096, the United States of America, or visit us online at tftw.org. The preceding program was a production of Truth For The World, a work of the Duluth Church of Christ.